Hey, John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. I've got a question here from a Maurice. I think that's Maurice. Mar 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 we'll say Maurice. I think that's the correct. I haven't seen this name before. But, uh, but anyway, he says, uh, I'm a subscriber of your blog, I, and I was thinking if you could give me some hints on a recurring problem I have. All right, I will certainly try. Um, time and again, I'm starting a new job in a new company and entering a new project. There's hardly any documentation. There are multiple, or rather lots, of Visual Studio projects gathered in several solutions. The database can be as big as 100 tables, if not more. Automatic entity relational diagrams are hardly readable. I know that asking anyone in the project would be a good solution, but it's like a legacy code even for them. Of course, no unit tests there are. Uh, the only solution I see is to sit down, read it, and try to recreate the structure of a, the project, but that got me thinking. There must be other ways to do it easier and better, more intelligent, more efficient. Can you share your advices on how to get around in legacy code? So, Maurice, this is difficult <laughs> at best, right? Getting around in legacy code is, is not easy, especially, right, that legacy code that's neither commented nor written well, right? You know, if, you, if you've been following me for a while, you probably know that I'm not the biggest fan of, of comments, but uh, because I'd rather you write good code that's clear and, and explanatory. But when that is not the case, I am a big fan of comments. And usually this legacy code that you're talking about doesn't have either, right? It's neither clearly written nor does it have comments. So that makes it difficult. Or those comments lie, right? Which is even worse. So how do you do this? How do you get around legacy code? Well, you know, first of all, you have to ask yourselves, you have to ask yourself why. Do you need to get around it and understand this legacy code in order to, to work with it effectively? So what, what I mean is, you might not need to know how the whole system works. I know as, as engineers, right, we want to know how the system works. And when it's a really big, large application, it may just take time to do that. You may not be able to sit down and, and, and understand exactly how the things work. Now, obviously, the best thing to do is to try to find the most knowledgeable person about the system and ask them about it. But in order to do that, you need to have intelligent questions to ask, right? So, so there's kind of a thing that, that I would suggest, right? This is my first crack at it, which is go find the most senior person who understands the architecture of the system, ask them for a high level architecture of the system. Then go and study the system with that knowledge because having that little bit of guide path is going to make it your sitting down and reading the code a little bit more effective, right? If you just sat down and crack open the code and try to divine the architecture of the system yourself, it may not be apparent, it may be so interwoven, right? There may be someone who, who could give you that guidance. Once you have done that and you've gone, then you go through the code yourself, you go through the modules, you go through the database, and you say, okay, this makes sense, this piece goes to this, connects this, right? And then you can go back to that person and say, hey, does it, here's, here's what I came up with, here's what I understand, is this right? Is it, does this make sense? And that's gonna give you, you know, a jump start on it. Uh, the other thing that you can do, right, is you can start trying to figure out different pieces. Where, you, know, you, might, you might not need to understand the whole architecture of the system in order to start implementing things, right? So maybe you say, okay, you know, some of, the, some, some of the basic plumbing things, right? So usually applications have a user interface and a back end. So how are things translated? How does data translate to that system? Can you follow something through there? Can you go and look at some functionality that's in the front end and trace it back all the way through? That's gonna give you a good idea of the architecture if there is some sensible architecture to it, right? How did this data go from the database, right? These are two things I would debug, right? Go in the debugger, figure out you know, what's happening. Debug, first of all, how does data populate up from the database? This should be fairly easy, and this will give you a skeleton of the architecture, right? Go to some piece of data, or you, know, you can start at the front end, that's probably the best place, and trace it back and see where it got read in from the database and how that happened. So that's gonna give you some idea, right? And then do the opposite, see how data gets saved to the database, and go and you know manipulate some data, watch it through the debugger and see where it goes to get saved. That's gonna give you usually some of the, you know, and then it depends on what type of application it is, but you can see how our pages rendered, how our different views, right? What are the, the different subsystems uh, that exist? But, you know, 
it, there's not a really great way to do this, right? Um, what I tend to do is if I'm working in a particular module on a particular feature, I try to go through and understand the code and do some refactoring as I do before I make changes. So if I have an isolated area that I'm going to work in, right, if I'm going to implement some kind of new feature, I probably do. And if I do that, then I can go through and read line by line, make sure I understand exactly what the code is go is doing and that, and sometimes I'll add documentation, right? I'll add comments actually, if it makes sense to do so, but I'll try to refactor code as I'm going through and just understanding it. Because if I'm, if I fully understand a thing, I can refactor it in such a way that it's now clear, right? So there's some variable named X and it's X equals, you know, some equation, blah, 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 right? I go through and one time I figure out exactly what that's doing, then I can refactor that code. Maybe I'll write a unit test that, that basically, uh, you know, test that functionality and then I refactor it so that it makes sense so that the naming is right. So that instead of the variable X, I have, you know, whatever it is that, that makes sense in that, that context. So sometimes I do do it that way. That's obviously a slow process, but you know, if you really want to understand the legacy code, you need to be able to read it line by line and understand exactly what it does. And depending on the scope of the project, right, you might not be able to do that. Usually, you know, you're going to have to do this as you encounter features that you're developing, right? You want a big level, you know, high level architecture of the system and understanding that functionality and, and hopefully there's a few people that can help you to gain that knowledge. But then you you just you're not going to understand the intricacies, especially if it's not well designed in, unless you're you're working in that code and hopefully when you implement a feature, then you can go back through and you can go line by line and make sure that you understand it. It it, it takes work. It's it definitely takes an effort. You know, there's there, there's definitely some skill involved in working with legacy code. In fact, there's a good book, uh, I believe it's Michael Feathers. I'll make sure I get the, the link down here in the in the description, but I believe it's uh, working effectively with legacy code. And uh, and that's a, that's a really, really good book that talks about how to kind of structure things. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to go too far into this, but I tend to segregate off, like I create this little line of where the new refactored good code is going to live and where the legacy code is and I start to I try to make my line move right so that I'm I'm keeping things contained the nasty stuff contained and I'm building new stuff on top of it and there's the clean zone and so you know the, the new code that I'm writing goes in the clean zone I don't contribute to the mess that's one way to to work with legacy code it doesn't necessarily help you understand it but there, there's I mean there's a lot of skill that's involved in doing that and a lot of that just comes from experience and patience and over time you'll start to understand a legacy code base but there's no magic formula to instantly just pick up a legacy code base quickly because it's just it could be full of complexity and spaghetti code and it may not even be understandable you have to understand that sometimes when systems are designed without design and architecture and they've become a jumbled mess there's all kinds of side effects and things that are unpredictable and things that are tied together that shouldn't be. And so there's not a clear picture that you're ever going to be able to draw out of it unless you refactor that code. So, uh, you know, hopefully that helps you. Uh, sorry that I don't have a magic bullet for you. I'm all out of those today, maybe next week. <laughs> uh, hopefully you like this video. If you do, uh, subscribe it or share it to someone who thinks that they can just magically understand legacy code. If you're looking for that secret, well, you won't find it here. All right, uh, let me know if you if you think you've got it, or if you've got some better hints for for uh, Maurice, uh, you know, leave them in the comments below. Take care.